Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC, a weekly podcast and YouTube channel discussing everything Wrexham from the point of view of long-term fans and brand new fans like my wife. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome to episode 25 of Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. So coming up on today's show, we have a very special interview uh, with football commentator, Sky Sports pitch side reporter, star of the Welcome to Wrexham documentary and lifelong Wrexham fan, Bryn Law. Um, we've got Lessons with Sean, which people seem to like a lot. I did this one this week. <laughs> we've got the quiz, we're going to talk about the games, so... Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it because we've got a lot to get through this week. So we'll start with the Bromley game. Yes. What did you make of it? It was very wet. It was. It was horrible conditions, wasn't it? It wasn't the best. No, it was horrible. But performance-wise, what did you think? Um, Considering the conditions were as bad as they were, I thought the lads played really well, to be fair. Yeah, they did. Bromley were well organised, well drilled, and they came to play a certain way and they, I thought they played really well to yeah, be honest yeah um it was one of them games that I think you've just got to dig deep sometimes and go right okay this isn't going to be the prettiest of games no but we just need to get the the victory out of it and I think they did really sort of dig in yeah and, and, and get it done I'm not sure whether it was I st- well I still can't decide whether it was a good game to watch or it was a little bit, bit boring. I don't know whether I've still got the Coventry game in my head and it's like, <laughs> yeah. is any game going to stand, you know, yeah, stand well, up to that yeah, game? Yeah, that's the thing. Not every game is going to be the Coventry it's game, not, is it? It's not, but and we I, have to kind of, yeah, get I, on with that. Yeah, I think Tuesday was a, a, a full-on, old-fashioned, National League, non-league football sort of game. You know, the pitch was horrible. What do you make of it? Are, are you worried about the pitch? at all but be, you know considering how much we've spent on it tw- twice and <laughs> twice and I, there's quite a few people talking about it on social media that's why i asked the question yeah. because we spent so much money on mm-hmm. it and uh, the, the argument for me is well you can't stop it raining can you but yeah. but long term are, are you worried that about the pitch or is it not something in your field of vision <sighs> it's not really something in my uh, no. field of vision no i don't really i mean I mean, I'm I'm still flabbergasted that they spent a hundred grand on on some grass. Yeah. But obviously, there was a reason behind it, the technology and stuff like that. I'm assuming. I don't really get the grass in it. Well, it's grass, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I don't know whether that no. hinders or. I only asked because a lot of people were were moaning about it on social media, and then some people were going, "Well, what are you moaning about? It's raining. It's just the way it is." And is just, there anything that we can do? Well, not we, but the club can do because I'm just, they've got obviously frost sheets, haven't they? Yeah. But have they got waterproof sheets to put over when it's raining? No, you could hire maybe two hundred people with umbrellas to come down and stand there. Maybe no, not really. I mean, it, uh, with. Uh, they play in the rain anyway, so it's yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. falling short of putting a roof on the on the stadium, you know. You, you never know. You might have a retracting roof. There's no need for us to have a. a you can't roof. anyway because we've only we haven't got like four, no, four and all sides. the all the stands are different sizes, so it'd be <laughs> like a right mishmash of no, yeah. It, it, no, it's not needed somewhere like this. It's ne- you know maybe needed in very big sort of stadiums. Even then, not really. Do you know what I mean? They, they don't yeah. really do that. <laughs> it changes the sport to an indoor sport then. Which isn't football anymore, is no, it? So, it's a bit, yeah. so it's not really. Uh, Our seats are a bit awkward because we're we're quite near the front, but we're not near the front that we get absolutely soaking wet. But we do get when but it we, rains. When it rains directly at you, yeah, we yeah, get, we, we do get wet. we do get a little bit. So, but it's fun. Is it? <laughs> is it really? <laughs> no. About the game itself. Yes. Um, so there was a there was a few. What should we call them? Strong challenges. Mm. So you picked someone out quite early on, didn't you? You go, why have they got a child playing for them? Um, he did it... look about 12. Yeah, he, he did look 12. Is Searched it... everywhere on the internet, though. Couldn't find his age. No, couldn't find his age anywhere. I did, didn't Did end. you? Went... Oh, yeah. okay. So cool. his name was Fisher, yeah. and he was 17. So uh, fair play to the lad, breaking into a, a first team, albeit on National League at yeah. 17. Yeah. Um, but he was very lucky to stay on the pitch quite early on, wasn't he? He was 
God, he was fouling left, right and centre. Well, there was one tackle in particular. Um, so it, the Bickerstaff one. Bickerstaff wasn't playing. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> no, it was on McFadzian. Um, so it was a bit of a two-footed lunge a little bit on... Um, Tony Cliff, I'm thinking of. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a bit of a two-footed lunge. It looked quite high. Yeah. Um, McFadzian stayed down for a little bit. Seen the replay. Doesn't look horrendous um, in sort of, uh, sort of uh, what do you call it? <laughs> not slow-mo, not sped up. In the normal speed, it doesn't in look... In real time. It, yeah, in, yeah, doesn't look horrendous, horrendous. But when you see some of the stills of where his yeah, feet yeah, yeah. were and stuff, it was very high, stud showing, two feet. And so I just think it was he was very lucky to still be on the pitch that early on. Question for you. This on. this probably should go into the to the lessons with Sean, yeah. but I'll ask you now. Is there a rule of how high somebody can kick for the ball before it becomes a foul? Not not really, but if the, the sort of the the rule is is if you're going in for the ball, mm. it should be with one foot. Yeah. Okay. She so shouldn't be going in two footed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two footed, you're opening yourself up for yeah. for, for getting sent off straight yeah. away. Um, if you miss the ball, yeah, um, then wherever it is on the leg, if you hit the ankle, if you hit the shin, it it you're always again, you know, it just depends on the the sort of how intense that tackle yeah. is. Yeah. Um, the further up the leg it is the worse it is. Because if you bear in mind how tall a ball is, yeah, and generally the ball's on the floor, if you go over the top of the ball, stud showing, and you hit someone in the, sort of halfway up their leg, the likelihood is you're going to get sent off yeah. for that. Um, but no, there's no rule as to how high you can kick somebody. No. Because if the ball's bouncing, it's a, it's a sort of like hip height, yeah. and then you swing for it and miss and kick them in the hip, that's not necessarily worse than something mm. lower down because it's higher up. Yeah. It's how much control you've got as a defender as well. So you're making that tackle. You want it to be a strong tackle because you want people to know you're there and you're not going to be messed with. But at the same time, you've got to be in control of what you're doing. If the ref deems that your tackle is out of control and you, you know, if that ball goes, can you pull out of that tackle? Uh, you know, it's it's about how much control you've got in that situation, and okay. it, it, whether it would be deemed as reckless. Or not. Lessons with Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just sort of talked around in a circle a little bit then. Yeah, but I yeah. think I understood. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tom O'Connor. We seem to mention him every week at the moment, mm. but um, so he played. My question is why why he played i'm not asking you yeah, i'm just because i because he's a player yeah no uh, see for me he's a player i think it should have been jj all day long okay that was a game for him because tom o'connor's game is very much take the ball he's very you know sort of measured in in, in his sort of possession of the ball he not, likes to find a bit of space. He likes to play it on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, he likes to sort of control and dictate play a little bit. In conditions like that, that was never going to work. He was never going to be able to control the play oh, yeah. in the way that he normally does yeah. in conditions like that. I found it a little bit strange that he played at all because for me, I would have taken him out mm. and I would have put James Jones in. And I think that was the right call. I'm not a football manager, as we as we well know. Yes. But that, for me, was the sensible thing to do. Do you think that Parkey was keeping uh, James Jones um, off the pitch to kind of rest him ready for the Altrincham FA Trophy game? Because he was obviously the captain, wasn't not he? Not really, because I think at the moment, the team that we're starting with is pretty much Parky's settled team. Yeah. He likes playing with O'Connor there. He likes playing with Luke Young there. He likes playing with Elliot Lee there. That unfortunately means JJ hasn't got a spot at the moment and he's on the bench. So I don't think he was particularly resting him for anything in particular. Yeah. I think it was that is just the team. Okay. That that we have now. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, which is unfortunate for him. 
he's a great player, but it's just sort of a, sometimes I think he needs to look at the conditions, the opponents, and for me, I think JJ was the one that should have played there yesterday. Didn't JJ score? Yesterday. Uh, yeah, Literally, he, he did. We'll come on to that. In a yeah, minute. yeah, I'm sorry. Am I getting ahead? Of it? <laughs> You're getting ahead of yourself. Getting now. ahead of the game. Um, so the penalty. Yeah, we got a penalty. We did. Was it again? A, was it a penalty? Um, from your new eyes. From where I was sitting. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know. I but I've seen like the replays and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not sure. It was a weird, it's a strange one. Again, within the rules, if you put your foot up yeah. high enough to be in contact with somebody's sort of chest or head or yeah. that sort of area, then anywhere on the pitch, generally you're going to get a free kick for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, obviously, everything's a little bit more strict within the penalty box because, you know, they don't like giving penalties. It shouldn't be. It should be the same rule wherever you are on the pitch. The thing that was a little bit, iffy with it was Tunnicliffe was flat on the floor and he got up so from a lying down position because yeah. he, he, he'd fallen yeah, over yeah. and so and then the ball was there and he was coming from the ground up to head of the ball so yes he sort of made contact with that sort of area face yeah. head area but Tunnicliffe wasn't as high as I think the ref thought he was initially because he was coming from you know he wasn't his head wasn't six foot off the ground yeah, do you know what I mean yeah. his head was probably half of that yeah yeah because he was coming up from the ground um if I was uh a Bromley fan I'd have been fuming they probably were they, they, maybe and I think I, I would be I, I would be really angry with that decision um Although I think if it was flipped around, Bromley would have won a penalty as well. It's one of them grey areas, yeah. I would say, because you know you're not supposed to make contact with someone's face. Did Michael? Did Cheek know he was there? Maybe not, because he's come from the ground Cheek. up. Cheek, that's his name. Cheek. <laughs> um, the he's Cheek co- of it. He's come from the ground up, sort of thing. So did he know he was there? Maybe not. He's just gone to play the ball. Um, I don't know. We did a talk for two minutes, and I still don't know really if it was a penalty. It was a penalty. We'll take it. We got it. it. Yeah. We got it. I'm just not sure, really. It was It was a bit... It's one of them who cares. We got the penalty. We got the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Got one hundred percent. Now, you talked about JJ coming on. I did. I made a little joke. You did. did. I Tell everybody what your little joke, joke was. Because um, Sam Dalby was coming on at the same time, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. And I met... I, no, I mean, was it Sam Dalby? Yes, it was, was Sam it? Dalby, yes. And I, I joked. When, when JJ come on, I went... I, I said, oh... Oh, here we go. Is a game changer coming on now. Now, that sounds slightly facetious. Now, because slightly. what I meant, what because we'd had a conversation just before this, um, where I said, because we were struggling. It was one all. Yeah. We're not struggling as such, but we were struggling to get any sort of momentum on like a quite a boggy pitch. A lot of people just said they were players were absolutely knackered. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I think it, the conditions didn't help either. No, no. Oh, and I looked at the bench and we sort of had a conversation where I went, we don't really have any sort of flair players there that you go, oh, we're in a hole. Game Who do changer. We, who's on that? Who, what game changers have we got on the bench that are going to change this game? Previously, when Jordan was in the team, yeah. Jordan was playing, we had Lee on the bench as what, that dynamic flair player to bring on and change things, which yep. he did many times. If Lee played, the same thing. We had Jordan yeah, yeah. on the bench to come on, flair player, you know, and, and to make something happen. Mm-hmm. At the moment with Jordan out, I'm not sure 100% we have that, that sort of player okay. who's going to come on and completely change a game, which is why I made the joke when JJ was coming on. As it turned out... He was a game changer. <laughs> he was the game changer. And it, look, it was a really good strike. Got the deflection, you know, which is, always helps. And, you know, and we got the goal. And I think it was just... That was a game last season that I'm not sure we would have won, if I'm completely yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I think Tuesday night was one of the biggest wins we've had this season. 
not because of the opponent, but because of the conditions, mm -hmm. because of what came before on the Saturday, there was always that, you know, after the Lord Mayor show sort of thing where, you know, you've got that dip and, um, and you know, and the conditions and everything conspired against you to not win that game. So I think to actually play not back. great and to actually get three points from that, I think that's one of the biggest wins that we've that See, we've got. See, that's the thing, though, isn't it? You know, it depends on what you want from a game. You, you know, if if we can play utter rubbishly, yeah, rubbishly, is that even a word? <laughs> don't think so. Anyway, utter rubbish, yeah, and we still come away with three points, yeah. Can't really moan, can we? It's the remember, go back a couple of months and we asked this question: blue pill, red pill, the whole matrix scenario. Would you do you want to play? really fun to watch football but no guarantees on results or do you want to play absolutely dull football and you know and we win every game one nil it's it's that whole scenario again yeah, isn't it and, and i think as time goes on for all the new fans i think they may be starting to realize as is with most sports sometimes you've just got to win ugly you know, you've got to yeah, win I've a game. Yeah, I've seen that so many times. You've just got to win a game that yeah. maybe, you know, it's just, it's really horrible to watch mm -hmm. sometimes. We played some all right stuff, but it, was, it wasn't pretty to watch by any stretch of the imagination. And they're the games that decide who wins the league yeah. at the end. Yeah. Not, the, not your five nils away to Dorking. You know, they're not the, you know, they're, they're nice to watch and it's great and you're pinging the ball about and you're scoring lots of goals yeah that's fine but it's the games that you know that you're you, on the edge you, of the you, sea yeah you, you almost don't deserve to win they're the games that decide the league at the yeah. end of the season for me strange man of the match wasn't it on tuesday completely i don't get it came out a complete left field that yeah, but like we said though it's whoever the people who support man of the match yeah they won't have their photograph taken. It was away. Uh, it was an odd one because it was. Uh, I'm was saying, uh, not taking it away from him. He did play well. Anthony but... Ford got man of the match. Yep. Uh, it was a little strange. I don't think he was massively involved. Luke Young was mine. It, it, I don't think he was massively involved. But when we sort of we <laughs> when we sort of went, oh well, who who should it have been? There wasn't really anyone, was there? And no one had a no one had an amazing game. I don't think that you know a, a game to a level where you sort of go. Oh yeah, it's definitely him. Yeah, Luke Young played well. He always plays well. There's a couple who played quite well. James Jones, arguably, he could have had it. You know, he wasn't on for long enough for me. Uh, to, to a goal, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. So did Mullin, though. So yeah, you Mullin know. always gets it. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I mean, good three points. I think it puts us in the sort of driving-ish seat at the moment. We're three points behind County, and we've got two games in hand. Yes, win them two games in hand. And you know, home games as well, aren't they? And I'm not well, it doesn't, it doesn't really work like that because in a couple of weeks we're going to be playing Sheffield United, Notts County, I believe, are going to be playing in the league, so that'll be another game on top of that. So, you know, you might play one of your games in hand, but then it'll get taken away with the FA Cup, and then yeah. so it, it's one of them. You just got to, you just got to wait and see, you just got to keep plugging away. That's 16 wins in a row at mm -hmm. home, you've just got to keep going, yes, keep um, going in, altering them. Quickly, yep. Um, don't want to dwell on this one too much, but what did you make of it? Oh, I'm so glad. You, I, I was going to ask, you know are what? you happy? I am, um, because I think the the obviously the team that Parky picked it wasn't his usual eleven. No, nope. um, which totally made sense. Yeah, and, and you know I'm glad that he didn't put out the um, eleven, but I'm kind of, you know they did well. Yeah, but I'm kind of glad they went out. The, the way that they did, I'm glad. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I'm glad it wasn't the first team yeah. that lost. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, because I, I think that would have been a bit, bit like disheartening and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, definitely. I think it was. Um, uh, we we put a, a tweet out, didn't we, on, on Twitter? I picked my eleven that I would like to see playing. Um, I got ten of them right. You did. Um, the only one I didn't get right was. Um, 64 year old david jones playing in midfield he's 38 <laughs> that was odd it was an odd pick that was i thought they could have given someone else a game in there i know he's not that old i'm only joking but um but yeah it was I, it was an odd pick he played a lot longer than i thought he would as well to be honest with him um 
He's obviously but a good player, isn't the he? The player I got wrong was David Jones, obviously. I put uh, Kai Evans in without remembering. I think he's mm. still injured. Yeah. Um, but that's the only... a shame, really, because it would have been nice for him to... Yeah, and, but that's the only one I think I got wrong. Um, I think the first 20 minutes, they were very much on top. They could have been 3-0 up, I but think. But the commentator didn't let us forget that. The did commentator he? was, yeah, it was awful um, on National League TV. But, um, yeah, they could have been 3-0 up. They had lots of chances. Yeah. Uh, we stayed in it. And then uh, Mr Bickerstaff stepped up and, and scored two. He was, he was like three minutes of each other? Something yeah, ridiculous yeah. Ridiculous like that. What did you make of him? Uh, do you know what? I definitely think that he could, or he's proved himself that he could kind of switch, like kind of go in place of Mullen if needed. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought he really, really, um, oh, what's the word I'm trying to say? He, he kind of owned it. Yeah. And he, and he kind of made me, and maybe other people, but kind of, I can't think what I'm trying to say, but he, he basically owned it. He did well. Yeah. And he deserves, well, he deserved to be, yeah, he deserved to be in that team, but he also deserves a chance at, um, in the first team at, for at the odd game. I, in... I agree. I think, you know, if, I think he deserves a place at least on the bench. Yep. Look, he's not as good as Mullin. Like, like, you know, it, no. he's just not. But I think he's definitely a good player. Dalby for me is 70 odd minutes, good replacement for Palmer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Does he replace Palmer and Mullen or just Palmer? Who? Dalby. Uh, he has replaced both. Yeah. So it will depend. He did on but, um, Yeah, Tuesday. but it's a natural replacement for Palmer because of his height. So Palmer yeah, yes. is the one that the ball goes to high. Yeah. And he will win it, well, try to win it in the air. Dalby, tall as well. He's, yeah. a, he's a good 6'3", six, 6'4", six, Dalby. So he's a natural replacement yeah. for Palmer. For me, Bickerstaff is an natural replacement for Mullen. Yeah. And I could see, you know, Dalby and uh sort of Bickerstaff playing together, you know, later on in games, yeah. maybe when we've got and I think he definitely deserves his chance. But look, we went out uh on penalties. We nearly yeah. hung on. So we nearly got through against a, a first choice Altrincham team. We put our complete second string team in, apart from maybe James Jones. Uh, he was captain and for the as well. He plays now yeah, and again, now and again. But certainly, certainly, Matt Linden isn't in the team on a regular basis, no, is he? No. You know, so it's pretty much a second string eleven. We nearly got through. We nearly held on. Um, I just think towards the end they very much pushed on Altrincham. Yeah, and they obviously wanted it. The goal they? was disappointing. Uh, although I think on the balance of it, they probably deserved at least a draw out of the ninety minutes. Yeah. Um, the penalties were shocking. Um, mm. Would you have chosen the people that we ha with that Parky chose to take the penalties? Yeah. Would you have chosen those four, five? Is it five? No, four? Bickerstaff was unlucky with his penalty. It was a good save. I would have picked Bickerstaff, uh, Dalby, uh, probably James Jones. So that was three who took yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Resol Johnson was one, which was an odd one to pick. I didn't. I wouldn't have picked him. Um, well, saying that, I don't know how I don't know how good they are at taking penalty, but looking at Reese Hall Johnson, <laughs> I don't think he's ever taken a penalty in his life. Yeah. Um, no, sorry, that's that's awful to say. But um, love you, please. Lennon was the other one, was it? It was Lennon. Yeah, I think penalty. you were a bit. He's, I was a bit iffy about him. Yeah. But he, he scored his. Yeah, you need to keep your opinions to yourself. I know. I was quite surprised. Maybe someone like McAlinden didn't take one. Mm. Um, but can you imagine though? Bick, was Bickerstaff the one, the last one to take it? No, he was the first. He was the last one. Mm. Was it Harry Lennon? Because mm, I, I, I said to you, mm. whoever it was anyway, I said to you, I said, that, you know, the pressure. Yeah. Because it, that basically was the deciding goal, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, and it's I, like, and yeah. it's like that pressure, I mean, you know, I'm being at the end of the away fans as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I just, I'm not sure. I think I would have buckled. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe. Um, so we're out of the FA Trophy. Bye bye FA Trophy. I think it's one of them. I sort of, I thought we'd win it. Yeah, you did. Um, but you know, we're not going to now. But it's, you know, we're out of it, and I don't think anyone's crying about it, are they? Let's be honest. No, I'm not. No. We did have just quickly. We did have somebody getting in touch actually saying um, that Luke Tom Thompson on YouTube yeah. um, commented saying, "I would love to see the team win the FA Trophy. It would be great to see." Yeah. Well. 
Sorry, Lou. <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to happen. happen. But we've got bigger, more important things to we've got worry bigger about. Bigger fishes to fry. Yeah, we have. So, um, just to run through some stuff that's happened this week. Uh, the cop's gone. It has. Ooh, it looks so weird. It does. Sad. But it's it's I, uh, on to on to bigger and better things. Yeah, I went I went shopping on my own the other day. Yeah. Um, and I uh, not that that's relevant. <laughs> I um I drove I I purposely drove past it yeah, so I could take did. a picture. It was dark, but I you know I could yeah, see yeah. it, and it was it was just bizarre because all of it was gone. Yeah, it was just mud. Yeah, it's so it's it's going to be weird. Next home game is the Sheffield United game. Yeah, quite pertinent because that's my next point on here. But that the it, it's the, on the twenty. It's been moved to the Sunday. 29th. Yes, so it's been moved to the Sunday at four thirty. It's going to be on BBC. Um, just for anybody who wasn't aware of that. But that's going to be the first game that we go to that we're going to look over and the carpet so isn't weird. going to be there. So I mean, obviously, they're going to be having, like, they're going to have fence and stuff up, aren't they? To yeah. Kind of stop yeah, 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 yeah. But it's going to be weird not seeing... Very odd. End of an era. I stood on there as a kid. And I'm, See, it's... And I'm almost on the cusp of being an old man now and now, now seeing it go. Yeah. It is sad, but it's it's knowing that something better is coming. So ex- I can't wait for that to start being built or when it's be finished. It's going to be immense. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at it being ready sort of the end of next season, I think. Sort of in that, sort of at the end of next season, being ready for the start of the season after that one. So the, the start of the 24-25 yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exciting. It's it coming up. It is exciting. Uh, just some more uh, sort of game news. Uh, so the Woking game. Controversial. <laughs> has been moved to uh, Tuesday, February the 14th, which is obviously Valentine's Day. Ah, see, for us Welshies, though, yes, our Valentine's Day yeah, do is not on the... Do win win. That's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you said that. It's on the 25th of January. It so... is, so it doesn't really matter. So it's next Wednesday. So I will... It's t- not a week on Wednesday. What I'm going to do for Valentine's Day this year, yes. I'm going to take you to the football. Is that all right? Do you know what? I actually I commented saying, luckily, me and the hubby have got season tickets. Yeah. And I can't think of a better date day, date night even, yeah. than going to the football. There you and go. that is a genuine, genuine thought. Yeah, my dad's fuming. He's fuming, so, yep. Uh, because that's the day he goes on holiday. And your mum, I think, was just laughing. <laughs> laughing in his face <laughs> when that came up. Oh, dear me. It's all right, me. Phil, we'll keep your seat warm. Yeah, we will, we will. <laughs> Right, so as we mentioned before, um, last week uh, we had the absolute pleasure uh, of speaking with Bryn Law. Nicest man ever. He is is a lovely guy. Um, So here is what he had to say. Right, so welcome Mr Bryn Law to me, the wife from Wrexham AFC. It is an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much for doing this for us. So um, obviously Wrexham have had ups and downs and things over the years. Um, but what is your favourite era uh, watching Wrexham? Ah, that's a good question. Um, my favourite era is the one when Brian Flynn was in charge. Um, when we got into the division, um, the third tier level. This gets complicated for people who don't necessarily... Sean, you yeah. might have been struggling with this one to an extent. In terms of the terminology here, because in the old days, we had first division, second division, third division, yeah. fourth division. Then it changed to Premier League, Championship, well, it wasn't initially League One and League Two either. There was another stage before that. No. But now, you, when you talk about, I talk about tiers because it, it just makes more sense. We have five tiers, so we're currently playing at the at the fifth level or the fifth mm-hmm. tier, if you like. But we, so we got up. I'm confusing myself now. We got up <laughs> to League One, which is the third tier under um, Brian Flynn. I'd missed the bit because I moved to Wrexham in 1979. Prior to 1979. Wrexham had been fantastic for a number of years. And this is where a lot of the the sort of uh, inherited history in, um, around the football club comes from that period in the, in the, in the late 60s to the, to the early um, 1980s, more like really the late 70s, frankly, when the club was constantly on the up and up, got to FA Cup quarterfinals twice, was playing in Europe regularly, got to the, cup, uh, the quarterfinals of the European Cup Winners' Cup, was playing regularly in front of big crowds, 20,000 type crowds. And that was a fantastic football team. But I missed all that. Timing has never been one of my strong points. So I arrived when the club was at the tier level, but was actually inexorably beginning 
the slide down the divisions. And I saw and experienced, witnessed that, that slide down through the divisions um, to a position where there were crowds of less than a thousand. I've been in crowds of less than a thousand for league games, football yeah. league games at the race course. So where we're at now, much lower than we were then, is is remarkable, even on the basis of that fact. So we, but we, we began a bit of a climb back when Brian Flynn got the job. Um, there's a little tale attached to that. Um, I was uh, an avid fan, obviously, by this point. Um, we played at home against Burnley one weekend. We were in the fourth tier at this stage and we lost 2-6 at home to Burnley. And after the match, I was so disconsolate, so distraught with this, this performance and particularly with the result that I sat down and wrote a letter to Brian Flynn to say, Basically, if you don't think you can handle this, it was his first ever job in management. He'd been a player before. If you don't think you can handle it, you should you should walk away now. I was about 16 or 17 when I wrote it. And I sent off. And on, um, I guess it would have been Monday or Tuesday morning, probably Monday morning, because we had a, a, a sort of a service that would get their letter delivered, so I don't know, through Monday then anyway. Anyway, Monday morning, I was upstairs in bed getting ready just to get up to go to school and and the phone rang downstairs and my mum answered and she called up she said there's a phone call for you I said okay right she said it's Brian Flynn <laughs> and it was <laughs> Brian Flynn the man who had had the letter who had read the letter and had then gone and found a telephone number so that he could ring me and explain why actually he was the right guy for the job and and it was if we if we were patient it was all going to be okay mm-hmm. and I thought that was fantastic I mean, what a touch that was. And I, I mean, I've got to know Brian really well since then um, through the through my career. And we talk about that. I've talked about that with him since because that showed uh, his commitment to this thing that he, he gave me the time of day. And I was very, very impressed. And not only did he then do that, but he actually did what he said he was going to do in the telephone conversation. And he created and built something. The best thing I've seen up until this point at, at, at Wrexham because what he invested in was the infrastructure, not just the first team. In fact, there wasn't really money to invest in the first team, only sporadically. So what he did was very, very clever. Brilliant scouting, brilliant youth setup that he created at the club. And we reaped the benefits of that for a number of years afterwards. And it was under Brian's leadership that they built Collier's Park Training Ground, the training centre, which was at the time absolutely envy of of other clubs in the Football League because we had better training facilities with that Collier's Park um, training ground than clubs in a championship tier two level had um and i was traveling around by now working and seeing what other clubs facilities were like and rexham's were better and we were at a lower level than them and he took us to the brink uh, there was one game away at south end uh, it was the last game of the season and we were um playing to try and get into the top seven it would be wouldn't it in the division uh so the second the third tier um, League One as it is now, we were playing to get on the final day. If we won the game, there was a possibility we got into the playoffs out of that division. And in the second half, we were beating South End, and at the same time we were beating South End. I think it was um, Brentford, who were our rivals for that final playoff spot, were losing at Bristol Rovers. And for five or ten fantastic minutes, we were in the playoffs on the final day of the season. And then inevitably, this being Wrexham, their game kind of ran beyond ours they equalised and then got the winning goal. Whatever happened, anyway, they ended up getting the result that they needed ultimately to secure that final playoff place. So we had, I had 10 minutes where we were almost in the frame to get promoted to the championship again. And that was with the team that he, with the team that he created. And he, and his skill was in building and re, rejuvenating. We'd sell players, good players, and we'd sell them for a lot of money. People like Brian Hughes went for a lot of money, but yeah. then he would find a way of replacing them and he brought lo- through loads of lads who are still very close to the club. So that team that beat Arsenal was full of people who'd come through the youth system. Um, and it was built basically on a very local basis. So that that was the, be- the best period was the entire Brian Flynn period. But the best bit for me in within that period, I think, was that spell when we, we were in at League One level and we had a team that was competing at the top end of that League One level. We had some really good players and um, we got as close as I've seen Wrexham get to getting back to that second tier level at that stage. If you if you had to, so let let's take if you have to take off your aviation gin uh, Wrexham hat and put on your John Motson style sort of commentator sports journalist hat. Take all the emotion out of it. 
how do you see this season going? If, if you're just looking at it objectively, I, I know that's a really hard question because you're a Wrexham fan, but how do you, how do you genuinely see the, the, the end of the season looking for us? Well, in, in, in fairness, probably the, my, my view would be the same. With either, wearing either hat, my, my John Motson trilby or my uh, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds-style baseball cap, yeah. which I'd love to see in the club shop, by the way. Why do we not get yeah. the chance to buy a Ryan Reynolds crested baseball cap? But that's another matter. <laughs> um, I think the season will continue the way the season is, is my suspicion. Um, you've got three sides, and I have to say three sides because uh, I think Chesterfield are a good team as well. Yeah. You've got three sides who are um, measurably better this year than the rest. So we've had in previous seasons, we've had one team that's been standout in terms of um, you know th- their their performances. You've had two teams when when us and Fleetwood were going at it, and we ended up with ninety eight points, and incredibly still didn't get promoted. Well, we could be heading for a similar scenario to that. In fact, I think we probably are heading for a similar scenario to that this time. Because I just don't see, having seen quite a few games actually this season and seen a bit of Notts County as well. And I was at Notts County when we lost there. And I was at Chesterfield when we lost there. They're both, they're two decent sides. And I don't think they're going to drop many. I think there's a a sense we have as, as fans now that at some point they're going to hit, you know, that they'll have a blip or whatever. My sense is that that probably isn't going to happen. I think it's going to be very fine margins. Um, and it could be like it is now, um, bearing in mind there's the, there's the games in hand scenario currently, it could be like it is now right the way through until the end of the season. I cannot anticipate that of, of those three teams at the top, that any of them is going to have a major sort of wobble. Yeah. There'll be the odd game, and it's going to be based on, I think, the fine margins will be based on a draw here or there that should have been a win. Um, and I suspect that when we come to analyse at the end of the season, that that's what we'll be we'll be looking back on, reflecting on, well, we either succeeded because of that point that we gained at wherever it was, or we failed because of that equaliser we conceded at York, for instance. Yes. I think it'll be I think it'll be that sort of ending this season. I fear because that means yeah. that means a lot of tense games. So we've seen you up in the the nice posh seats at the race course um, with where Rob and Ryan sit. We're just um, below those. Actually, we are just below those. Um, when when there was sort of whispers about Rob and Ryan sort of taking over the club, did you get wind of that sort of prior to it coming out in the news, or were you just as shocked as everybody else when that actually came out? Well, uh, the answer to that in a way is yes and no, because um, I was in touch and I am in touch with Jeff Stelling, the Soccer Saturday presenter, who's a big Hartlepool United fan. And Hartlepool um, have been down at the, the the level we're at and got themselves back up again. I was in conversation with him. We were exchanging text messages around the fortunes of our respective football clubs at one point. And he mentioned that there'd been a suggestion of a takeover um, for Hartlepool and that he'd been... Um, told there were two high-value Americans, but he didn't know their identities, um, who were interested in possibly getting involved with the football club. So I um, said, well, uh, all right, okay, well, if they're not going to take over at Hartlepool, maybe you could send them over to Wrexham, um, because we could maybe do with a bit of help. And he said, well, it's funny you say that, because he he said, I I suspect that, that they may be doing that now. And that was the that was I assume that was the, the the it has to be the same people. It was in the same time frame, and so at that point um, there was you know that at some stage just after that the revelation as to the surprise for me was the revelation of the personalities involved. So I was aware that there was interest perhaps, and I was aware that it was significant and it was American. Um, but when the names were revealed, then that was when things were um, suddenly completely crazy. Frankly. And really remains so to this day, you know, it, uh, t- to all intents and purposes, we're still kind of um, all shaking our heads a little and going, how did this happen? Yeah. Um, we get more of a handle, maybe or more of a sense of it now, but it still it still feels almost as mad as it did on that very first day when the when the names were when the names were revealed to us all. I mean, what can we say? Amazing. Lovely. He was so, he was so, so lovely. So um, down to earth and he knew his stuff. He really did. Really did. So that's, that's a very, 
small part of the interview. A little sneaky peek. Yeah, so we spoke to him for uh, over an hour. Um, it could have been longer. It could have been longer because we were having such a good time talking yeah. to him. It, it could have definitely been longer. So rather than sort of just cut them few sections out for you and show you that, what we've decided to do is put the full interview on uh, and that will go on tomorrow. So episode 25, that's this one today. Episode 26 will be a special episode and that will be released tomorrow. That will be released on YouTube and it will also be released on um, uh, uh, on the pod as a standalone podcast yeah. as well. And yeah. that will be an hour-long interview uh, with Bryn Law. So that's out at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. The 17th. The 17th. I'm yes. glad Sean said that because I didn't know what the date was. I'm amazing with dates. Yes, you are indeed. So, yeah, yeah if you, uh, if you want to see the full interview, that will be out tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled for yes. that one. So, the, our next game. Yes. Maidstone United. Uni United. Yeah. United. We are away in the uh, Gallagher Stadium, I think it is. Oh, you know more than me. I know. Uh, <laughs> I did my research, Ryan. So, what do you want to know? What do you, what what do you, do you want to know? know? <laughs> what do you want to know about Maidstone? So, so um, oh, hang on. So, Maidstone, we have got some info for you. Have we? I have, anyway. So, th this, this, obviously, just, just in case somebody is wondering... Um, our next game should be Chesterfield on Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, but Chesterfield drew with West Brom in, in the FA Cup, which then means they have to play a replay to see who goes through to the next round. That replay falls on Tuesday, which is why our next game is not Tuesday, it's Saturday against Maidstone. I'm disgusted. I'm devastated. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Maidstone are currently... Third, uh, 23rd, 23? Yes. 23rd? 23rd. What's wrong with me? I don't know. Um, and last season, obviously, they promoted from um, National League South. Oh, did they? Yes, they did. Oh, oh I didn't so know obviously that. obviously, they were number one, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought we'd played them last year. Oh, I'm thinking of Maidenhead, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, you are. Oh, I'm getting confused now. See, I know. I, do you know when I post stuff about Maidenhead? It's like Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield yeah. United. It's so confusing. Anyway, so yeah, they got promoted from National League South uh, last season. That was last season. Would you like to? Do, would you like to um... fact check? Yeah. Yeah. No, you crack on. It's all right. I thought we played them last season. You know. Well, if we did, I apologise for my facts <laughs> being incorrect. But it'll, yeah. Um. So their top scorer this season. Yeah. Um. Is Barham. 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 Okay. Uh. Top assist. Don't know. No. Uh... Sometimes it gives you that information on BBC Sports. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm. And I don't know why. Mm. Anyway. Um, so the last few National League results, um, they obviously they, there've been games in between trophy and all that, yeah. all that malarkey. But the National League games, um, Vanarama League games, even Dagenham and Redbridge away, yeah, they lost one nil. Yeah, uh, these these results are not good. No, <laughs> Dagenham and Bridge, uh, Dagenham and Redbridge home, yeah, they lost one nil. Yeah. And York away, yep. they lost 4-1. They've actually, <laughs> I, I know you, you only ever look at the last three games, they've actually lost their last six league games in a row. I actually got some information about that. Yeah. The uh, When I was obviously doing my research, yep. because of the, the poor, dire results that they are getting, their manager, Hakan Hayretin, has been sacked. Oh, is he? Um, yes. He, seven consecutive defeats in all competitions. Yeah. So... He hasn't uh, gone. Yeah, so he's got he's gone. Um, that, that always worries me because you always get this thing in football, which is called new manager bounce. Mm. So when, oh, right, yeah. when a new manager comes in, the players in that team have been quite settled for a while. They know they're getting picked week in yeah, week yeah, out, yeah. even though they're not really performing that well. They they they're, sort of, they're settled and they've got no reason to sort of push or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. When a new manager comes in, the new manager doesn't know them. So these players now have to show why they're in that first team. So always a little bit worrying when a manager goes and you then you go and play them, you sort of go, oh, God, because they potentially are going to up their game to prove to the new manager yeah. why they should be in the team. So that's that's not ideal. Um, they've only won five games all season um, at Maidstone. So um, they... I'm assuming that's home and away, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's everything. So that the, kind of bodes well for us then, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's only one team worse than them in the league at the moment, and that's Scunthorpe. Um, they've only got 21 points from 27 games. 
So they're not even averaging a point a game, um, which is particularly poor. Um, so, yeah, it's not great at the moment for them. Um, prediction? I'm going to go 4-0. 4-0 away. I'm going to go... I was going to... Do you know what? You're sighting in my head. I was going to go for that. I'll go 3-0. Why you not? You can go 4-0. No, I can't. It's got to be a battle against each other. It's not a competition. It is a competition. It's um, just so competitive. It's ridiculous. I, I, I'm going to go 3-0 then. Okay, yeah. then. All right. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, lessons with Sean now. Yes. Yes. So somebody got in touch, didn't they? His name uh, on YouTube is Impressive Tony. Yeah. Okay. So yes. he got in touch and he said he's also new to football. Um, he said he'd never really been into sport at all Me prior, to, prior to watching the Re uh, Welcome to Wrexham documentary. Mm -hmm. He said he enjoys this section of the show and also how w welcoming we are to newbies. Of course we are. Um, we love he you did, all. He did. Uh, there was some other stuff, but I'm not going to mention that because what you will well, explain why uh, on another uh, episode. He's, he's given some ideas of what we can do yeah. in this section. So yeah. don't want to ruin the surprise moving forward. One suggestion he made, though, yes. is changing the name of Lessons with Sean to Sean School. I like it. I think we need to do a poll, don't we? Yeah, Shan School or Lessons, or Lessons with, with Shan. Or something else. Or, who cares what anyone thinks? It's our podcast. Let's go with Shan School. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I like Shan School, though. Impre it is impressive, Tony. It is. So, I Shan <laughs> School. No, last week, what we asked you to look at was how league positions are decided yes. when teams have the same amount of points. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to do, yes. I'm going to give you a scenario, mm. and I want you to explain how that would be decided, okay? And then, once you've explained the first section, I will then ask <coughs> you some more questions. So I just... <coughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll carry on. I'll, I'm professional. I'm so trying I'll to get out on. of it, so yeah. I'm choking. I'll give you a scenario. I'll ask you some questions. You answer them, and let's see how much you've learnt during the week. Okay. So, here is your scenario. It is the end of the season. Okay. Wrexham and Notts County mm -hmm. are in first and second positions. Yep. But they are level on points, on 98 points. How would the league decide who was in first place and who is in second place? Goal difference. Goal difference. Correct. Explain to everyone what goal difference is. It is the difference between goals. <laughs> Joking. Um, it's basically the difference between goals that have been won. Scored. Scored. Yeah. And goals that have been conceded. Correct. So if a team had uh, scored 100 goals. Yes. And conceded 30 goals. Yes. What would their goal difference be? 70. Plus 70. Plus, yeah, plus 70. So if it, a team had scored 20 and yep. conceded 30, their goal difference would be? The same. Be 70. Plus 70. No. Plus... If a, a team Sorry. had scored 20 and conceded 30, what would their goal difference be? 10. Minus 10. Minus 10. So that's an important point. So it's it, it, it literally swings both ways, basically. So it's... You, you, you can have a minus goal difference and yeah, you can yeah, have yeah. a positive goal difference. So the team with the highest goal difference when teams are, are, are level on points, then that would be decide who, who is higher is yep. decided by who has the best goal difference. Scenario, next scenario for you, following on. So Wrexham, Notts County, level on points. Yep. Goal difference yep. is exactly the same. So how would they then decide who is higher? The team with the highest goals scored wins. Correct. So in that scenario, it is exactly that. So if Wrexham had scored uh, 100 and conceded 30, yeah. their goal difference would be 70. Okay. If uh, Notts County had scored 90 yep. and conceded uh, 20, their goal difference would also be 70. Wrexham would go into first place because they'd scored 100 compared to Notts County's um, uh, 90, as an example. Yeah. One last one for you. Okay. 
their level on points, their goal difference the same, and their game, their goals scored and conceded are also the same. How would they then decide who is in first place? A playoff match. So that is the, the, there is a, a, a chance of a playoff match, but there's also another way that leagues can decide uh, how head to head records. Yes. So the games that they play together. So if Wrexham, hang on. So if Wrexham um, and Notts County end up level on, say, eighty points, for example. Yeah. Wrexham. Uh, beat Notts County yeah. to nil at home yeah. and drew one all yeah. against Notts County away, yeah. we would win the league. Yes. So basically that's the head-to-head record. <laughs> so we lost one nil away to Notts County. Yes. If we win one nil at home, the head-to-head record is exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And then you would have to go to a playoff game. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we lost one nil away. If we win two nil at home, then the head to head record dictates that we've won that on aggregate to one. Okay. I always wondered what aggregate it was. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so now then, I know. There you go. So that's that's how. How did I fare this week then? Do you know fair play? You've bought a book, haven't you? I have. So Sharon... for those on uh, who watches on YouTube, I have bought a book, and it's called Football for Dummies. But obviously, if you're listening on the podcast, it's by uh, a gentleman called Scott Murray. Yeah. He's a football writer for the Guardian and Four Four Two. And do you know what? This book is amazing, and I've been, I've like, I need to get a highlighter because there's so yeah. many good nuggets in this, and yeah. it's going to help me massively in my lessons. It is. So somebody suggested, so for next week, yeah, a lot of, we we do get asked a lot of stuff. You know, how does this work? How does that work? Yeah. yeah. So we sort of take that and we will use it in this section yeah. to help other people along. So what other people want of of asked more what do the people want ryan what do the people want <laughs> so, so people have asked and um and it, it's it's worthwhile doing more than one person has asked this question yes. so they've asked about yellow and red cards yes so what i want you to go away sorry you've and... got hair hanging that's really annoying me <laughs> sorry so we, <laughs> we've got what what you need to look at is how do yellow cards work how do red cards work and how do yellow cards uh, accumulate to, okay, through yeah. a season um how long do you get banned for if you get one yellow card five yellow cards over a course of if you get a red card how long do you get banned for how many games do you miss so all of the stuff surrounding yellow and red cards that is your job my trusted book will tell me I'm yes sure. i'm sure it will but well done for so this yeah the week. book is football for dummies um and i just got it on amazon so yeah it was great. Go and get it. So yeah. anyone wants to get in touch, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or email me, the wife from Rexamafc at gmail.com. Any other little people who got in touch you wanted to mention? Did you just say little people? Did you mean Any- to say little people? <laughs> I didn't mean. Any other people yeah. who got in touch? Uh, we had an email from a gentleman called Zach. Um, he wanted to say, firstly, uh, it's a long email, so I'm just going to obviously pick bits out. Yeah. So, uh, But thank you very much, Zach. He said, firstly, I just wanted to say that I love the podcast, and it's something that I look forward to every Monday here in Dallas. Uh, so hello in Dallas. I've always been a soccer fan, but primarily in the following US men's national team. Yeah. There was never a specific club in Europe that I followed closely. And obviously now he loves Wrexham. Um, he enjoyed, uh, so after watching the Welcome to Wrexham documentary and learning, he's been learning about the history of the club and the town. Yeah. Um, he says, I can't help but follow the club religiously and I'm watching games on National League TV as often as possible, rooting for their success. Um, he did ask, my question for you both is, how many points yeah. do you think Wrexham will need by the end of the league to capture the National League title? Um, he's put a point of reference, but we obviously know the, the stock yeah, board. Yeah. Thing, it, it, so. I, I did reply to Zach. It's very difficult to say. Personally, I think you've always got to aim for 100 points. Mm-hmm. But we've been in a scenario before, 2012, where we got 98 points and finished second to Fleetwood, who got 103 um, whereas so 90, 98 points would be enough to win 70, 80% of the, the, the titles that have gone in the mm. last sort of 10, 20 years. Um, so it's really hard to say. You've got two teams at the moment who win, 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 you know, all the time. Chesterfield are like... Uh... Yeah, you know, you've got another team in there. So it's really hard to say. My my honest answer is aim for 100. 
and you know and him was a bonus. you're not going to be miles off i don't think a couple more um the uh, family dinner one um on youtube again commented on the coventry game the yeah. league goal reminded me of the ronaldo world cup goal and then put in brackets not a spectacular obviously <laughs> yeah um and Traden, uh some bad pass control near the later half made me nervous this is obviously the coventry game yeah it did look like field conditions were less than favorable at the end oh maybe it's the Bradley game yeah, talking is, about. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> especially as the match progressed past the half yeah yeah it was it was well thank you very much to everyone who got in touch um a uh, quick shout out for dragon chat mm -hmm. uh, as always it's a mental health i always have to look at this because i i always like to get the words right so it's a mental health peer support group yeah um it's have to do great it yes it's on zoom every thursday um, so it starts at 7 p.m. Um, it's for anybody who's struggling, who wants to talk to somebody. Um, and it, it's a great service and I would highly recommend it to anybody. Um, if you want to get on that, if you watch on YouTube, there's a link down in the description. Um, if you listen to the podcast, head over to the Wrexham AFC Facebook page and Twitter page. And they post the details of how to get on the Zoom call on there. Do. They do. Indeed. I think actually, I they share it on Twitter, and I obviously if I'm if I see it, I will share it on our Twitter and everything. So yes. people have obviously got that information as well. There, Definitely. So. so, quiz with Sean. Quiz with Sean. Yeah. You really need to. Yeah, I yeah, know. Think of better things to say. <laughs> so it was FA Trophy weekend. It was indeed. So I've done an FA Trophy quiz. Great. Yeah. I'm not excited about this one little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we made it to the final of last season's FA Trophy. But who did we beat in the semi-finals? Not counting. We didn't. No. It, but the reason I got excited, that's not the worst guess in the world, because we beat them in the quarterfinals. Uh, Grimsby. No. How many guesses do you think you can I'm have? I'm not, yeah? I don't know. No, we beat Stockport. 2-0. You know I was going to say Stockport. There's Mullins' big lob over the keeper. His big know? lob? His big lob. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, question two. Yes. We unfortunately lost the final 1-0. But who was it against? Bromley. Bromley. Let's well done. There. Yes. Question three. Yes. In the closing moments of the final, we thought we'd equalised. But whose goal was disallowed for offside? Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Oh, um. What's his name? I want to say Harry, Harry Levin. No. No, he was injured by then been injured for a it's while some, it's not your usual mullen oh 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 i can't think of his name what it, describe him to me i might give you a point i don't know <laughs> you'll say his name now and i'll go that's it it's jake hyde oh no <laughs> <laughs> i knew i was not thinking who I was, not who i was thinking of um question four yes. uh, we lost to altrium in the fourth round on friday night we did but who did we beat in the third round we were there, just just to throw it out there, just to make it a bit more difficult oh, for you. Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe, well done. Uh, the final question, mm. to make it three out of five. And I would say the pressure's on to make this respectable, because I think three <laughs> out of five is respectable. Okay. Um, who was our top scorer in this year's FA Trophy? Mullen. This year's FA Trophy, yeah? You're going for Mullen. Bickerstaff, Mullin. I don't think he's played a game in the FA Trophy. Yeah, no. Bickerstaff scored three in this year's FA Trophy. Two on Friday. Yeah, unfortunately for him, he's not going to score any more uh, in this year's competition. So uh, because it was Friday the thirteenth as well. So you know. Yeah. Who cares? You know, it's done, dusted. We're all we're all gone now, aren't we? We're all gone. We're all gone out that competition. I think that's uh, yeah. I think it's we enough, need to say goodbye it? now. I'm tired. <laughs> oh God. Right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in again this week. Um, as we mentioned, the next episode will be released in 24 hours. So that is tomorrow, Tuesday, the 17th at 6 p.m. And that is the full interview yes. with Bryn Law. Enjoy. Yes, we hope you enjoy it as much as we did actually filming it. Yeah. So it was absolutely amazing. As I say, thank you very much. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.